one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto me. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for today will be 373, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the Promises.
another day journey of realizing that we stand not because we've been so good, but because of your grace and your mercy, you have allowed us to see this day. Father, we ask you to continue to look down on us as we look up to you. Let us not run this race in vain. Father, give us that love that runs from far to far and brings grace. And bind our hearts in love so that one can't fall because he's leaning on another. Father, we come asking you to look down for those that may be suffering sickness and affliction, those that are in the hospital. Father, we have ask you to have mercy on those that are praised and bound. Father, we ask you to look about this congregation. Bless those under the sound of my voice, whether they be here the same prayer or here on some reading. Bless them with such blessings that you see. Thank you. 
at 9.30, we will have our Sunday school hour. And that will be the constant hour where we have our Sunday school lesson. And then we will have morning worship here in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock. As we come to a time of prayer, several prayer requests demand our attention. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's be in prayer for the family, Sister Bradley, who laid her sister to rest yesterday. They celebrated her life in such a marvelous and dynamic way. Sister Bradley, we are praying for you and your family in this time. Several of them in our sanctuary are still dealing with grief and transition, and they're dealing with sickness. Let's just pray for one another. Let's also be in prayer for the Green Acres Full Gospel Church as they are continuing to mourn the loss of Bishop Fred Caldwell. We all know all too well what it means to lose a loved one, but also what it means to lose a pastor. So let's definitely be in prayer for them during this time as they mourn his death and prepare for transition. We know that God is able to take care of his church. And because he's able to take care of his church, we stand in solidarity with them as they are preparing for such a time as this. And let's pray for one another. If I told you everything I was going through, you told me everything you were going through, we'd be here all day talking about it. And the reality is, when we're talking about it, there's nothing we can do about it. But when we get down on our knees and burden our souls before the God of heaven, we're not only to somebody who cares, we're talking to somebody who can fix the problems we face in our lives. So if you can't tell nobody else your problems, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about your troubles. He'll hear your famous cry. And as he hears you, he'll answer by and by. And let's pray for our children as they're preparing to go back to school this coming week. Let's pray for our faculty and our staff that are involved, that God grants them favor and grace this upcoming school year. I can't imagine what life is like to be in school during the pandemic, and I can't imagine what life is like teaching to children while they're in pandemics. Let's definitely pray for our faculty, staff, and our children. Matter of fact, let's do this. For all children who are present feel comfortable, I want you to come to the altar. All parents who are here who have children, please feel free to come to the altar. And any teachers who teach in any parish, please feel free to come to the altar. I want to pray for you as we're preparing for this. We have everyone else stand where you are on the sanctuary for those who are involved in the education system. If you feel led to do so, come to the altar now.
preaching time. Amen. We indeed have a preacher in the house. I'm grateful to God to have friends around this nation who I can call on in several instances and can share with. But I'm also grateful for the fact I've got an inner circle where I can unburden my soul and actually be myself. Yeah. They hold me accountable, I hold them accountable. We can actually be friends. Yeah. Reminded of what my pastor says all the time. If you don't do anything else in life, get you some good friends. That's right. That's right. And if you've got some good friends, hold on to them while you can. Oh. And I'm grateful to God that my brother and my friend is here to share with us. He really is no stranger to the city of Shreveport. He's a Shreveport native, but now gives leadership to the uh, New Gideon Church there in Baton Rouge, and he is the Lord's preacher. Yes, There's no better way to close out our summer psalm series than to put him up and have him declare God's word to us. And he has shown himself to be a friend that loves at all times and a brother that is born out of adversity. If you pray, he's going to preach. And if you don't pray, he's still going to preach. So I would admonish you to pray and help the preacher preach. So we'll be the better for it as he comes to declare the word of God to us. He is the person of Pastor Brandon Collins, and we will receive him at this time. I believe in helping the preacher preach. One of the ways we do it in our tradition is to give him a good Baptist hymn before we put him up. So, Brother Christian, put me in A flat. Let's go and put this preacher up as best we can.
place of worship that woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Yes, ma'am. Thank you that we have the opportunity to, to come to the house of faith and prayer one more time. It's not because we've been so good, not because we've been so holy, but it's because you've been so kind. Yes. Now, would you wash any negative residue of the world off of us now? Yeah. So that our hearts can be full of soil for your word. And we pray that as the seed of your word is planted, we look for you to give the increase. Thank you even now. I pray and beg of you that you would pour fresh oil on my head. Clarity of thought, precision of speech. If you can use me, I'm available. Yes, God. To speak, your servants are listening today. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create in each of us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. We pray that our time together is fruitful in our future. This is our prayer to you in the only name that matters, Jesus the Christ. We pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I know it sounds repetitive and redundant, but the Lord is good. Yes. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth. Of all generations. I'm sure that you would agree with me that it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. God is good all the time. He celebrates goodness and his grace, graciousness that he extends to us. To the very honored and able pastor of this church, your pastor, my friend, God's preacher, God's man, would you help me thank God for Pastor Michael for taking Would you do that? Thank God for his friendship and for his fellowship. And I don't take it lightly. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come. Not to do any better preaching, just to do some more preaching. You know, the only thought that I have with Michael for Jay is, is that he put me last after all these guys. <laughs> I got to looking at the lineup, and it's just registered to me while I was sitting there that I'm the last one. You don't do friends like that. <laughs> You should have let me go first and let the rest of them go last. But nevertheless, thank you for allowing me to come and share. I have family situated all across the sanctuary. I want them to stand so that you can see them on today. All the family would you stand so that you can see them. My wife is present. I want her to stand so that you can see her. right to it if that's all right with you. Would you be so kind to stand with me to your feet? If you ask me how it went today, I'm going to tell them I had them all standing. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And I request all of your prayers and all of your amen. Psalm 27, beginning at verse number one. I read from the New King James Version, not to shy away, whatever passage you have, but to better help us understand our lesson. When you found that passage indicated such by saying, I see it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You may take your seats and thank you for standing. The Lord is my light. My salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
I want to talk about today for a few moments what God means to me. All right, man. All right. What God means to me. The story is told about a school, Sunday school teacher who had given her students the assignment to write down on a sheet of paper what God meant to them. One student wrote provider. Another student wrote healer. Another student wrote wave maker. The last student wrote deliverer. When she read what the students wrote, she came to the conclusion that these students were not writing based on what they heard, but rather what they had experienced. I thought it would be necessary to come because for many of you, there is not enough ink in a pen to write what he means to you. Because for many of you, if you care to admit it, he's bread one day. He's a provider the next. He's a doctor to someone. That he's a healer to someone that's on their bed of affliction. And in spite of the many devastations that we experience today, I want you to know this, that he's still a very present help in the time of trouble. I'm saying to you, and if by chance I didn't call what he is to you, you still have a reason to open your mouth. If, if by chance I, I didn't call that name, you still have a right and a responsibility to praise God. Because hear me, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we don't know what he's been to you, but to all of us, he's been something. To all of us, uh, he has been a way maker at some time. Times. To all of us, he has been a door opener. And in fact, uh, for many of us, uh, we've gone through the vicissitudes of life and we've gone through so much in life uh, that we can't even tell what he's been. So when we come in church, uh, we come with our hands lifted. Uh, we come with shouts of joy. And for many of us, we might have to run around because he's been just that good to us. Uh, now hear me, if he ain't been nothing to you, we we understand your expression, but for the rest of us, uh, we can't sit still. For the rest of us, uh, we can't be quiet. For the rest of us, uh, we dare not come in this place uh, after all the ways he's made, after all the doors he's opened. Uh, we dare not sit here like we're doing God a favor. But in fact, is there anybody here under the sound of my voice can say he's been better than good to me? And in fact, every time I turn around, he making a way. I'm rushing quickly. At the time of our text, at the time of our text, David invites you and I into his private time with the Lord. I want you to hear it. He invites you and I in his, with the, in his private time with the Lord. And it is there that David teaches us that when we know the Lord, and trust him that the Lord helps us to overcome the fears that can so easily paralyze us. I want to say it to you again. It says, when we know the Lord. All right, let me pause real quickly because everybody around here that's talking about they know and don't know him. We don't know that you know him by how high you jump in praise and worship because most people who jump high on Sunday, they live real low on Monday. This is how we know that you know him. Can you love people that don't like you? Can you forgive people that's assaulting your reputation and scandalizing your name? Can you still speak kind to people that don't speak kind to you? Can you still speak blessings when people can't say nice things? That's how we know that you love God, and that's how we know that you love God, because if we be honest, uh, there are some people that make you want to squeeze the life out of them. There are some people that make you want to say the wrong thing 
to them. But and you got to be honest, uh, the only reason why you had went off on them is because I love God. Please understand, it ain't got nothing to do with you. It ain't got nothing to do with my intellect. It has nothing to do with my intelligence. But it has everything to do with my relationship with God. When we know the Lord, and when we trust him, he helps us to overcome the fears that can so easily paralyze our lives. This psalm reveals that David was in great danger with King Saul. Hear me. No friends, that in spite of what David was facing, he didn't close his eyes to the situation around him. But he looked by faith to the Lord and examined his circumstances from heaven's point of view. Did you hear what I said? Let me run it to you again. In spite of, of what he was going through, he did not close his eyes to the things that were going on around him. But instead, he took lemons and made lemonade. Instead, he looked at his circumstances from heaven's point of view. I want to help you live today. I really want to help you live uh, because I want to help you by saying this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you and I look around, it's so easy to get depressed. Uh, when we look at what's going on uh, in our world, when we look at what's going on uh, in our culture, you would be depressed uh, if you look too closely. And if you look too closely, it'll make you think uh, or almost make you forget uh, that there's a God in heaven. Uh, but I want to help you. Uh, listen, uh, when you got relationship with God, when you trust in God, you can watch things fall around you and your faith is still in him. Have you ever noticed uh, gas is hot but you still got gas in your car? Have you ever noticed food is going up but you ain't missing no meal? I'm saying to you, instead of looking at the drama around you, learn how to lift up your hands and thank God and say, I don't know why. I'm He looked at uh, he looked at his circumstances and he examined them from heaven's point of view. And watch this. After looking at it and after examining it, he came to this conclusion. It ain't nothing deep, but I think it'll bless you. He came to this conclusion. After seeing what I've seen, after experiencing what I experienced, I've come to this conclusion that God is everything I need. Who I say again? After experiencing what I experienced, right. after seeing what I see, I've come to the conclusion: not people, but God is everything I need. And hear me, you can't shout about that because for many of you, you've been putting people in spaces and places where God should be. And that's why you are let down because you place people in a place where God should be. And I come today from Baton Rouge to say to you, put God back in the place where God's supposed to be. Because when you put him where he's supposed to be, you won't be let down by the things that go on around you. You won't be let down by the people that so seemingly disappoint you. He comes to the conclusion that God is everything I need. Who is that today? Who is that today that needs to be reminded that God is all you need? Hey, I want to submit and suggest this to you. It's a uh, when God is all that you have, it is then that you will discover that he's all that you need. And I can tell by your response you haven't been to that point where God is all that you have. Because when you know God is all that you have, listen, your feet get light. Your hands uh, go up. When you've come, and maybe you just haven't gone through enough yet. But I know, I, I, I'm under no illusion with this many individuals in the room. It may not be everybody's testimony, but there are some individuals that can say, I've been through some stuff that my money couldn't get me out. I've been through some stuff, uh, stuff that my connections couldn't get me out. I've been through some stuff uh, that I thought that I was going to 
going to sink and I thought that I could never rise from it. Then God showed up and it was at that moment that I discovered that he was all that I needed. I want to talk to us because uh, we, we, we were in dark difficult times. Again, gas prices seem to be skyrocketing. Mass shootings seem to be a fad today. And, and you know, what's difficult is this for me, maybe not for you, just, just in the words of your pastor, let me unburden my soul just for a few moments. Uh, uh, what, 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 what seems to bother me is uh, when it's an African American, the police shoots him down, but when it's a white American, you can somehow apprehend him. Yes. Put a bulletproof vest on him. Don't take him to get something to eat. But yes. when it's an African American, your mind is going to open your mouth and say something. Yes. I'm saying it's dark yes. and it's difficult times when uh, you can send money, thousands of dollars to Ukraine, but can't help people right here in our city. I'm saying to you that something, I'm saying that it's dark and it's definitely when church people who have been quarantined and social distanced for a year or two still come to church, can't open their mouth, can't speak to people. You can raise your hand, but you can't speak to somebody next to you. I'm saying it's dark and it's difficult. I want to say to you, even in darkness and difficulty, All right. don't close your eyes to the darkness around you, but look at the darkness, hear me, as a mechanism God uses to develop you while bringing you closer. All right. yes. All right. yes, Let me say it one more time. Don't close your eyes to the darkness that's around you, but look at it as a mechanism that God is using to bring you closer to him. Uh, see, here's the thing. I've said this so much to where uh, we shout off promise. Right, 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 right. Right, come on. Right. Come on. Yeah. Everybody can shout off promise. Right. Yeah, man. But, but your problem is process. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't say that, but I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, because anybody can shout off promise. But how do you handle life when you're being processed? See, it's the process that's difficult. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, when, it's when one thing keeps happening after another. It's, it's, it, it, it's when it rains, it's, it pours. I, I mean, anybody can shout off the promise, but where is your shout in process? Because hear me, I'm under no illusion again with this many individuals in the room. Some of y'all have locked y'all today because uh, you are in process uh, and it seems as if uh, nothing is happening. And your question is, uh, if God loves me so much, uh, why am I going through what I'm going through? And I stop by to say to you, God has you where he has you because he sees where you're headed. And, and, what's, and, and according to where you're headed, God has to set up a process uh, that will empty you of some stuff uh, because what God cannot afford is uh, he can't afford to promote you and you still bougie. He can't afford to promote you and you're still arrogant. He can't afford to promote you and you're still gossiping. So, 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 so what he does, he, he, puts, he places you and I uh, in dark moments. All right. All right. Now hear me. Uh, we don't like to talk about that side of God. You don't like to talk about that side of God. Yeah, yeah. You've been listening to Jinx, Joel, and Joyce. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, they don't like that side of God. Oh, but, but, but there's another side of God that, that God places you in dark moments 
And the dark moment is to develop you quick because God is more concerned about your character than he is your comfort. God is more concerned about your development than he is your deliverance. And your problem is you want God to deliver you, but you don't want him to develop you. And I'm saying to you, the more God develops you, the less he has to deliver you. And you're where you are. I don't care. I don't care how big the Bible is marching under your own. I don't care how weighty the cross is around your neck. I don't care how many tongues, ta 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 ta, you speak in. You're going to stay where you are until you develop. And here's what development looks like there's something wrong if you are so close to God, but you can't speak to people. with somebody. Hey, <laughs> uh, I know I'm in that vein because you got, my church do that when I'm talking on this now. So I, I know I'm found you now. God is so concerned about relationships. He's so concerned about relationships that he says this in the Gospel of Matthew that uh, when you're preparing to give your offering and you remember that somebody has something against you, Pause. Not you against somebody. You remember somebody has something against you. He says this, that you are to leave your offering, go fix the relationship, and then give it. I thought I had a church around this. God, God, God often places you and I in darkness to develop you and I. Yes. Now, here, I want you to say this. It's, uh, it's problematic for you to think that God would put Jesus in darkness but won't put you in it. I'll pay somebody to say something. How is it that you think? You can do better than Jesus. That, that if God, that, 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 wait, if the scripture says it pleased God to bruise his son, you're around here thinking that you can escape everything. And I need to say as a prophet of God today that God, Gary, will keep you in what you're in until you grow up. And that's the word for some of us, if not all of us, because age doesn't mean that you grow. Ooh, Lord. I'm almost there. Yeah. So, so, so wait, wait, wait. He didn't close his eyes to the darkness that was around him. But he used it, right, as a mechanism that God was developing him and while bringing him closer. I understood this better. I understood this better with what I thought about years ago before there was digital cameras and iPhones. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that, 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 that was something. That was something. I'm not old at all, but you know what? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I grew up uh, when there was Polaroid cameras. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you remember that Polaroid where, uh, where, where you took the picture and, and you had to take it to Walmart or Kmart to, to get the pictures print out? And, and, and what happened is when you took the pictures, you didn't get them back that day. They had to send the pictures off to a dark room. And when they sent it off to a dark room, they took it in the dark room and it was in the dark that the film was developed. I'm saying to you that God has you in a dark room because it's only in the dark room, preach, man, I'm doing the best I can, in the dark room that God can develop you. It's in the dark room 
that he gets you to pray more. It's in the dark room that he gets you to talk to him more. It's in the dark room that he gets you to worship more. Look at somebody and say, I'll thank God for darkness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. David writes, he writes, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I understood this better as well looking at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the enemies came in to capture Jesus, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 55, 53, Jesus said to his enemies, this is your hour and the power of darkness. Maybe Jesus was thinking about this song and using it to console him as darkness settled in. I'm saying to you that you need a song when darkness shows up. Because hear me, it's not a matter of if darkness is going to show up. Hey, my grandma would say all the time, you keep going to bed at night and getting up in the morning. Darkness has a way of finding you. And if by chance, if things are well for you and yours, don't celebrate too quick. Because it's a short trip from the mountain to the valley. I mean, that marriage that appears to be little house on the prairie can turn into the nightmare on Elm Street. And then, and then I, want to, I want to say this to you. Be careful how you're helping people while you're going up. Yeah. It's not a matter if you're going to fall. You're going to fall and you got to pass by those same people you were mean and rude and snobbish to. Yeah, he used this, Jesus, that is, used this song to console him. God was his light. And when you know the light, hear me, hear me well. When you know the, the light, you can walk through darkness knowing that light is with you. I want to say that again. That when you know the light, when you know the light, you can walk through darkness knowing that the light is with you. This was, it was, it was, uh, it was Max Licato. Max Licato, for Jay, that tells a story about going to a certain city to preach. Yeah. And when he got on the plane, the pilot was a friend of his. Yeah. And so while they were in the air, they experienced rough air, and the plane rocked for a while, and when they finally made it to their, to their arrival, the pilot looked at Licato and said, Max, were you afraid? Max looked at him and said, no, I knew the pilot. Come on, let's talk. Because when you experience rough air in life, you don't have to be fearful. Why? Because you know the pilot. Who, who, he walks with me. I need a church now. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his When you know the pilot. Friends, that's the hope that you and I have during these dark times and difficult moments is that we know the pilot. And because we know the pilot, we can make it through rough air called sickness. We can make it through rough air called injustice. We can make it through the rough air. Listen, because we know the pilot. He says, the Lord is my light, but not only is he my light, he is my salvation. You see that? That is God is my deliverer. Come on. What, 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 what the psalmist is saying in this pericope is this, is that God is my deliverer from earthly enemies. Hallelujah. David, again, he's in danger, y'all. He's, he's in danger and doesn't know if or when he will experience sudden attack. All right. All right. David realizes this, and this is all I came to tell you. David realizes this, that deliverance is not up to him. 
That's what, that, 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 that's what I want you to know because in, in a strange culture today where we act as if uh, we are our own savior, I want you to understand that deliverance is not up to you. Here's what I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you are not Superman in this story called life. Uh, you are Lois Lane. You are not the savior. You need a savior. What he says is this. I'm signing off now. I see the do not disturb something on your face. I'm going now. <laughs> I got to leave you now. He, he, he says, he comes to the conclusion that uh, deliverance is not up to me. If I'm going to get out of what I'm in, I can't save myself. And, and, and hear me, there are moments in life where you have to constantly tell yourself that I'm not my only, I'm not my own savior. There are moments in life where you have to continue to tell yourself that God is my savior. That there are moments in life, ladies and gentlemen, if you want God to respond to you, you've got to regurgitate his word back to him. And you've got to tell him, Lord, you are my light. And you are my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Have I got a witness in the room? But David continued on by saying, When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. So war may rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that thing will I seek after. And that is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So this is what I want to say to somebody here. No matter what you're going through, sometimes you've got to turn your situation into a sanctuary. Yes, sometimes you've got to turn your chaos into a cathedral. Have I witness in the room and say if God brought me to it then he labeled to bring me through it I wish I had a witness in the room that can testify that God is able he's able to keep you from falling When things have turned you out. So would you find somebody? I know y'all don't want to touch nobody, but just find somebody. Look at them across the room. Look at them in the face. Look at them in the eye. And say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the darkness you got to experience. But let me drop a note. Encouragement. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tired, God will. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Won't it be bread in the starving land? Won't it be water in a desert place? Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? If you got to go through darkness, keep on. 
revival one night and he thought it necessary to get on the road and head back home. He had a journey before him. Somebody shout hallelujah. He had a journey before him. And so his daughter got in the car and his daughter drove him home. But they ran into a storm that night. They ran into rain. They until lightning, they ran into thunder, and the daughter looked at her daddy and said, Daddy, do you want me to pull over? He said, No, keep on driving. But the further they drove, the more the rain came down. The further they drove, the more intense the storm got. She looked at her daddy and said, Should I pull over now? He said, No, keep driving. But then the further she drove, they start seeing cars pulled over to the side with the emergency blinkers on. She said, Daddy, I can't see my way. I think we need to pull over. He looked at her and said, No, keep driving. And soon, somebody shot soon. Soon, they came out of the storm. They came out of the storm. And the preacher said, now pull over. She looked at him and said, what? He said, now pull over. He said, in fact, pull over and get out the car. She pulled over and got out the car. He said, I want you to look. If we had pulled over, we would have still been in the store. But because we kept driving, things got better. I got to go.